Minefield is a project that brings together Argentine and British veterans from the Malvinas Falklands War to create a kind of new narrative of what the war was. They are themselves on stage and they tell their own memories of the war and what happened to them after the war. In 1982, when I saw Argentine soldiers for the first time, they were arrogant. The second time, they were dead or wounded. The third time, they were defeated. But now, we're all 50-something year old veterans of the same war. Nice to meet Hello, you. Nice to meet you. Uh, the fact that I was born in Argentina during the dictatorship and also the fact that I experienced the war as a child um, gave me yeah, a feeling of the war that is, of course, very um, vague. I mean, I grew up in a country where I had to uh, sing by heart the Malvinas march. Las Malvinas, Argentinas, clama el viento. I grew up thinking that we lost this um, part of our country. It was something that was always around, but you never ask yourself what happened during the war and what happened to the people afterwards. Name. David Jackson. Age. 58. Rank. Corporal. Role. Julian Thompson's signaller. Current occupation. Psychologist. Do you remember any music? I've been working in a documentary um, field since 10 years, so it's not the first project where I'm working with what you can call non-professional actors but I just call them performers. So it's not new for me to, to put people on stage who are not used to be on stage. In the case of Minefield, it was clear from the beginning that I wanted them to tell their own memories and to make the process of creating uh, something together because Minefield is not only a theatre play, but it's a social project. It's like how do you manage to bring together former enemies to create an artistic work and to live together and hear each other? That picture traveled the world. During the research of the play, I interview around 70 veterans from both sides, and I always ask them the same question, like what is the memory that stays in your mind now, 35 years after the war? What is the thing that you can't forget? And some of them spoke about an image. Sometimes it's a voice that comes to their heads or the sounds of jets coming. And from that small memory, we started to create a narrative that puts together all these memories in a performance. Yo estaba aturdido. Nos seguían tirando. Tenía miedo y veo que Sergio queda tirado en el piso. When we had the opening uh, of the play in Royal Court Theatre, we had a post-show discussion and one audience member asked one of the members of the cast, how is it for you to be performing in the Royal Court Theatre? And he said, well, in fact, it's my first time in theater. I've never been to theater before, you know, it's my first time and I'm on stage. But I think that's one of the most interesting things of these projects, that you can see what people, real people bring to the stage, a new way of presenting feelings, emotions, stories, having someone who is sensitive, fragile, and clever on stage. It's something that can be more moving that than an astonishing performance of a wonderful actor. He got a belly wound. And I remember as I was trying to console him, he began to talk to me about having once visited England and something about Oxford. And then he died. Well, everybody was afraid, is it going to work? Uh, but I wasn't afraid because I knew that they could manage and, and, and they were extraordinary. They did like 10 shows and now we have done 
53 shows and they still do it and they still have a connection with it which is the most surprising thing for me because you start to think that at one point they will become mechanical and they will not connect to the stories that they are telling but somehow they find a way to always be there present and I think there is something that happens between the audience and them that it's quite extraordinary that it's an experience for everyone not just for the audience but for them too to show and to present their stories again. People become very um, emotional about the play and then they start to ask themselves questions about war, about what happened to people after the war, about what war does to people. And I think these are questions that it's good to be thinking of in these times.